I'm in North Korea right now because last week I was just making some delicious corn dog sushi in Japan and before I could take a bite I heard the nuclear missile warnings go off because Kimmy Jong Un was having a hissy fit. I spilled my corn dog sushi because of him, but as I was hiding underneath the table about to be vaporized, that's when I realized North Korea is only two hours away. So I bought a Kit Kat because Kim Jong Un needs to take a freaking break and a ticket to North Korea so I can tell him to stop doing that. Anyways, I went to the airport and the plane was either on fire or someone just had a vape. But anyways, once I landed, I immediately got on this bus and the soldiers boarded the bus and checked my documents and then I was sent through this underground tunnel underneath the border and then I emerged at Kim Jong-un's palace and it was pretty cute for a warmongering dictator. I walked up to the gate and gave it a good old knock but no one was home I guess so I was just walking around when I heard a security alarm go off and I scrambled to find a place to hide so I ducked into this cubby hole and hid there until they were gone and then I stuck out into the bushes and spent hours trying to return to civilization and I ate some blueberries that weren't blueberries. <laughs> hours later I finally found my way out and decided to give up on world peace and just eat the Kit Kat because I was hungry. Sorry Kimmy, stop. Stop. I was laying in the grass trying to get a bee to bite me so that I could become one of them and pee honey and then sell it and become rich. But all I got was a lump and an allergic reaction. But as my throat was closing up, a genius idea came to my head. People buy things that belong to celebrities all the time, and the one time I sold my own hair, I got $20. Now, I don't want to go bald, but what I can do is scam. So I decided to sell Zendaya burps. I grabbed every container in my house and burped in hundreds of containers, and in an hour, I had millions of dollars worth of product. I set up my website, and the burps were flying off the shelves. I finally had enough money to buy my dream purchase on Amazon. So I ordered some uranium, hoping there would be enough to build my own nuclear power plant so that I could live on a deserted island forever. I was waiting and waiting for my package and I started getting worried. My mailman always loses my packages and uranium starts to decay if it's not held carefully. And eventually it'll de- Okay, so I don't think I'm going to the island. I see a lot of people saying like, guys, if we really want to save the planet, we have to go vegan and use reusable straws. Like, I don't know who's going to be honest here. But, like, if y'all really want to save the planet, 90% of y'all gotta... If we be real here, like, come on now. Hello, I got nominated for Breakout Creator of the Year, but I need an outfit for the streaming, so I absolutely rated Depop and got this little jacket right here. And when I put it on, I felt the urge to, like, ride a horse, but my dog wasn't having it. So, um, option two, I got this jacket. But you're probably wondering, well, what are you gonna wear for pants? Um, I'm not! I'm actually not gonna wear pants and change the trajectory of everyone's lives forever. Just kidding! These are the pants and this is the fit. Do I look very French? We, oui, baby! Thank you so much, Depop, for helping- for helping me not look like a rat. Hi guys, Candy Cat. Oh, sniz! I love myself a Jolly Rancher! Hello, this is my outfit for the Streamies, which I am nominated for. I got it on Depop, and I look like a Victorian child that sells the newspaper for a couple quid on his bicycle. Hear ye, hear ye, the king has been crowned! <laughs> Anyways, I will be bikeless, so it is a 12-hour walk to the Streamies, but I will see you there! Thank you, Depop! So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic- Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic? Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because I filled a whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face and got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth it. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna share a little life hack I just discovered. So, basically if you're broke as she, just go to Google and search pictures of $20 bills it brings up all these pictures of real $20 bills just hit file print and like that's it like it's basically foolproof like no one's ever gonna like catch it I went to Walmart today to buy some Ed Sheeran merch, aka cabbage, because that's probably what he smells like. But when I grabbed my cabbage and went to go pay, I didn't realize I was in the makeup section trying to pay for a cabbage. And they didn't know how to ring up my cabbage by any freaking ways. The cashier girly dropped my cabbage. And I had to pick it up off the ground and it was kind of musty looking. But regardless, I left the store and walked home with it. And I was about to start munching on it when it slipped out of my hands and dropped again. And my little cabbage baby started rolling down the hill and I eventually caught up to it and it looked beat up. But I picked it up and took a crunchy cabbage bite and decided it would be a good movie snack. So I I brought my cabbage to the movie theater and it was all fun until I remembered I was watching The Quiet Place. And you know what wasn't a quiet place? My insides after eating Walmart cabbage off the ground! It was brewing like kombucha mixed with dynamite in my stomach and I had to leave and go home because it was dead silent in the theater and everyone heard my stomach rumbling up! 
You know you're an epic gamer when you use the Wii Remote without the safety strap. I was inhaling my daily bag of hot chips and then popping blackheads with my flaming hot fingers. And then I looked in the mirror and was like, oh, why is my skin falling off the bone like a nice rotisserie chicken? Thankfully, that was me from the past, a very terrible skincare routine. Because now my skincare routine is so sacred to me. And that's all thanks to Biotherm Serra Repair. First off, this stuff feels so good that my skin feels as soft and nourished as a little buttered up baby. Not saying that I put babies in butter... I don't know what to say. Anyway, it's not only amazing for your skin, but it's created eco-consciously. And its key ingredients are all sourced from nature. And guess what? You weren't created in a top secret lab. You came from nature too. I'm not going to get into exactly how that happened because, um, uh, anyways. I highly recommend Biotherm Serra Repair to keep a natural barrier, keeping your skin healthy and beautiful. I was so excited today to see Harry Styles in that new movie that he's in today. So I went to the theater and snuck in my own snacks because a hot dog is $12, but a pea and ketchup sandwich is two. But as I was enjoying, enjoying my delicious meal, um, they flashed an ad for like three seconds saying, bring, bring blood, blood to bathroom stall four. And I looked around the theater and like, no one was phased by this. So I, I sat through the movie, but Harry Styles wasn't the only thing making me feel curious. So I left as I as the credits rolled. And I went to the bathroom and I didn't think anyone was in there, but I, um, I found stall number four and I went in and locked the door behind me. And uh, there was this, there, there was a guy asking for the blood, I guess. And um, I wasn't about to give him my, my blood, but I remembered that I had my ketchup still. So I poured some on a piece of toilet paper and I, and I handed it to him, and it turns out the guy in the stall was actually just out of toilet paper and needed some, and I don't know what the cult stuff was about, but, but I'm now about to be murdered. All right, you guys, last one to leave the garage wins $100,000. Hosting for $100,000? Bro, no way, that's so easy. What's the catch? With the car running. Yeah, what, um, wait, what, um, what? Today I spent 9 hours painting Doja Cat, and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying, it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied, so I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes it is Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And, and when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And, and I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next thing I knew there were people banging on my front door and then one of them threw something through my window and I had no clue what it is so I slowly approached it but when I got too close it started to fill my room with gas and I heard on her live stream and she said careful of the tear gas the tear gas so I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calls me like once a week oh, support Donald Trump. and wherever they call me i um <laughs> politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the President of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly baby, fly. So a lot of y'all have been asking my workout routine, uh, so here it is. I start off my workout with a good old stretch that breaks every bone in my body. Then, I stretch my hand by jamming it in the garbage disposal and I stick. Then after that, I jog in Ikea for about 10 minutes. Then it's time for my protein smoothie. I add a used Nerf bullet, protein powder, a whole lot of Febreze for flavor, and a hand sanitizer for a little kick. And then voila, it's ready. And that's it. That's my workout routine. Today, I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were 
right next to the not so swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. For the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. Today, I went on a romantic date in France. Just kidding. I ate a plain bagel with mold, but I am tired of being single. So I grabbed my phone and downloaded Tinder so I could use the passport feature to meet people from across the world for free. All of a sudden, my phone dinged, and when I checked it, I had a match with Remy. We started chatting about our love for cheese, and I don't even need to go to Paris now because I have a video date with Remy thanks to Tinder Passport. Wish me luck. I was bored today, so I went to the mall to shoot boba tapioca at strangers. <laughs> But I didn't think I would actually hit someone, and they started chasing me, so I panicked and ran into the closest stairwell, and just when I thought I was safe, I somehow managed to drop my phone down the middle of the stairs. And I freaked out and ran to it to check if it was okay. And thankfully it was, because I had my Ultra Impact case from Case Defy. The four shock absorbing corner bumpers keep my phone safe, while still feeling sleek and not bulky. And now that I know that I can drop my phone from over nine feet, I just drop my phone everywhere. Whenever I don't feel like bending down, because my knees crack like celery every time I bend over to plug my phone into the wall, I just drop it on the floor and it's 100% fine. But guess what? You can get your own for 15% off with the code 15 high bend. And together we can have knees like Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> Hi, mind if I sit next to you? Oh, um, I don't think we've met before. Uh, you said you recognized me? Oh god, please don't say it. Um, yeah, that was me. <laughs> and now my mother freaking house burned down. Yeah, um, I, I did the beans video. Uh, no. No, no, I didn't actually burn my house down for a uh, TikTok. No, um, I didn't. No, uh, uh, it's been nice meeting you. Oh, oh my. Today I went to the movie theater an hour early because I'm half Caucasian and I wanted to see the new Spider-Man for the 30th time. But when I sat down, I noticed that they had QR codes for their overpriced food menus. So I got the intrusive thought to quickly run home and change all the QR codes to moaning sounds. So when I got home, I designed a bunch of fake stickers and printed them off with QR codes. So when you scan them, they play this. Anyways, I grabbed the stickers and drove back to the theater and stuck them over the top of the original ones. And as people trickled into the theater and the movie started, and they started scanning the codes for the menu, I suddenly began to hear... And then people would quickly hide their phones and try and turn it off. And it got to the point where they had to stop the movie. So anyways, I left and went for sushi. And when I got there and sat at the table, I noticed that this restaurant also has QR codes for their menu. And I had some stickers left over, so I carefully placed them on top of the old QR codes. And then I looked back at the dude behind me as he scanned his and... Anyways, my sushi was very delicious, 9 out of 10. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry and then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant. And I heard them say on the intercom. In the Greece, Peter, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on inside. So I found a door to the outside but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until i saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it but i had no other way to escape so i put it on to try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things and still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat strokes so i decided to just turn myself in so i went up to a cop and said i'd like to turn myself in and it was a damn utopia cop so i just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped down and, and threw my suit in the river I recently mentioned that I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off of the black market and the TikTok blew up, which is not what I wanted because now the FBI is gonna be on my ass. Cause this morning I was watching how snails make love when my MacBook camera turned on and usually it's just my FBI agent checking in to see if I'm doing okay mentally. But this time they messaged me and said, did you really buy human organs off of them? And I said, no, you dumb walnut brain doo-doo head. It's a TikTok. When have I ever made a serious TikTok? It's all just a joke cause I'm painfully bored with too much time on my hands and I just write down whatever comes to my brain and somehow people enjoy it. It makes me really happy but then I one hate comment and it ruins my whole week. And then my FBI agent told me, go to therapy. And I was like, damn, you're right. And I went to bed. Don't buy organs on the black market or your FBI agent will make you go to therapy. 
So TikTok sent me a skateboard and I decided to ride it down my stairs so I could see a Juice World concert. And you're probably wondering how did I get one? And it's cause I used my Russian hacking skills to make me the most followed person by changing my follow count from 6.7M to a B. To the B, M to the B, M M M. Anyways, with a brick, it didn't come with wheels. And I was like, what the heck? I was supposed to hang it on my wall. But I have trauma from last week when my stop sign fell off my wall and almost chopped me up in a cooked sashimi. So I decided maybe I can ride it down the stairs, but I don't want to meet Michael Jackson. Wait, never mind. Michael Jackson's in hell. <laughs> So I put on my frog costume from Halloween, but not only is it a frog costume, it's an inflatable frog costume. So I started at the top of my stairs and I slowly nudged myself forward until I wrote it down and... So anyways, now the board is snapped in half, but I got this cool new brew, so if anyone could give it a fun name, that would be greatly appreciated. So I was watching my local 7-Eleven burn down today when I saw a shirt or something in the bushes. And when I walked over, I saw it was a Walmart employee uniform that someone just left there. So I decided to try it on, even though it had a stain on it that looked like, uh, milk. <laughs> but that's when I got the idea to go to Walmart and see how long it would take them to notice that I don't work there. And I was just walking around in Walmart as a fellow employee. So the first thing I did was give myself a good employee discount on a few things I found. And then I was looking for something to do when I saw the phone for announcements just sitting there. And I was super nervous, but I picked it up and said, Attention shoppers, everything is free for the next hour. And then I hung up and panicked and tried to find a getaway. And I saw the employees only area. So I went inside and it led me to an elevator, which eventually led me out the main entrance. And when I finally made it out of there, the security was outside with its flashing lights. So I quickly took off my uniform, threw it in the bushes, and a Kardashian can get 4 million likes. But how many likes can my mental breakdown get? I was microwaving hot chip ravioli and sitting by a fire that I started in my living room when I started longing for someone to share the meal with. But then my eyes caught the word Tinder. I dropped my ravioli and grabbed my phone to download Tinder. And I made a profile to show off my personality and my love for food. After I added some pictures and finished my profile, I was gonna run some ranch dressing through my coffee maker to see what would happen. When all of a sudden my phone went off and when I grabbed it, it notified me that I had a match. Ever since then, we've been talking nonstop and we're gonna go on a picnic tonight and see who can dislocate their jaw the furthest and fit the most apples in their mouth. Anyways, wish me luck on my date. Today I woke up and grabbed my phone and text my friends, good morning, bestie. But instead I chose violence today. And out of the blue, I Snapchatted my friend, I know what you did. And then I had added her on Snapchat because I wanted to see her anger level. Then I put my phone away and I went upstairs to make lunch. And while I was getting the ingredients to make some delicious chocolate nachos, my phone started blowing up, but I didn't look at them because I was microwaving my chocolate nachos. And then once the nachos were done, I sat down and I enjoyed them. And then I went to the sink and I washed my plate. And then I decided it was a good time to assess her anger levels. So I checked my phone and she had said, Yeah, I told everyone you're an ugly ass, annoying ass, smelly, especially smelly ass bitch with a dog that looks like a raw chicken breast that you could boil and use the eye crust as seasoning. Lose my number. So anyways, um, I don't have my best friend anymore and I'm going back to bed. So last night I tried out that thing that like records when you... It records when you talk in your sleep and I talk in my sleep like a mother trucker. So we're gonna listen to those. No, you can't have my yummies. I want yummies. I want yummies. What? What are yummies? What are yummies? Mm. <laughs> Why did I sound like a Minecraft villager? Can, can we go to Poop Chopolis? <laughs> Where is Pooptropolis? So I bought this busted robot vacuum off of Wish, and it hardly works, like, at all. But I felt bad that it's trapped in my house all day and has to eat these nuts off the floor. Has to eat both of these nuts. <laughs> Anyways, I was always wondering what would happen if I just set it loose in the street So I took it outside and set it free by bringing it outside and walking it And I got a few weird looks from people, but they weren't walking their vacuum pets Which makes them look like the idiots Anyways, I was following it and I noticed it was actually leading me to this warehouse And I was really scared to go in, but Bofa brought me here So I opened this huge door, which led me down a weird hallway And that's when I realized little Bofa had taken me to the NASA headquarters Because I was hearing some weird, strange song playing And water began to pour in and I started panicking as it started to fill up and that's when I heard a voice on the intercom say, What do you feel like? And that's when it clicked and I said, An astronaut in the ocean! And that is how I was selected to become the first TikToker chosen by NASA to go to space. 
Last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza. And it worked, baby! But the place was terrifying and the food was even scarier. And after a few bites, I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach. So I got up and I stumbled out of the restaurant and I went home. Then the next day, I scheduled an emergency Zoom doctor's visit and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant. And I was like, what the hell? I don't lactose, I got all 10, baby. But then he told me to put my feet away and I was like, you're right, you should be paying me for this, not the other way around, buddy. And then he started telling me you can't eat pizza anymore. But his video started to cut out, but it's okay because I know what lactose intolerance is. I can't have bread anymore. So I got rid of all my bread and all of that fart food right in the trash. And then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days. And you know what? It was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing 10 times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me. So I immediately ran to the bathroom and... So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose, baby. My dearest Mima once told me, the circle of life is everywhere. That's why today I'm using her ashes to season my baked salmon for supper. I get all my seafood fresh from the sewer drain behind my local prison, because my uncle taught me when I was a young boy that if you take headphones with a phone attached playing Ed Sheeran and leave them by a sewer drain overnight, the fish in the sewers will sewer side. And when you check back the next day, you'll have plenty of fish ready for the lunch. Now, I'm not using any seasoning other than Mima herself, because I'm half white and my Mima told me that seasoning is the devil. Plus, the fish is already marinated in toxic chemicals to give it a little bit of a kick from the sewer runoff. I throw it in the oven at 400 degrees, and once it's done and I take it out, I finish it with a few more ashes. And then I finally take my first bite. <laughs> <laughs> Though it looks like I have Mima stuck in my throat from the dryness, so instead of her ashes getting spread at Disneyland, they're getting spread in this toilet. Bye, Mima. I don't know if you remember, but five years ago today, Harambe the gorilla was D-worded. So, I decided to take a quick trip to infiltrate the Cincinnati Zoo, because I think he might still be alive and the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Anyways, when I got there, I did a bird call to attract some birds to land on me as a disguise, and it worked. A bunch of gay chickens landed on me and I had the perfect disguise. I was walking around looking like a zoo employee, which let me sneak into the employees only area with no suspicion. I was walking around in the back rooms when I tried saying hi to the employees, but they were busy cleaning fish doogie, so... I stopped to pet some stingrays because I couldn't find Harambe's enclosure and then I pet some sharks and they were so cool just like a little bit slimy and then I saw some jellyfish and they're so pretty so I reached in the pet Where am I? The place you go when you pet a jellyfish stupid Oh well let me see I was enjoying some olives and yogurt when a piece of paper slipped through my mail slot. And when I went to go check it, a huge box flew through the slot and hit me in the head. That's when I remembered I ordered this game called Incoherent from Amazon at like 2am. But nevertheless, I was so excited to play it. But I realized I don't have any friends around me to play with. So I decided to call some of my besties instead. I dialed the number and I was like, hey bestie. And they said, this is... Taco Bell. So I was like, okay, first round, neck key menage. Please don't call this number again. And I said, no silly, it's Nicki Minaj. What about press feet tin? Yeah, we're taking your phone number to the police. <laughs> I was like, no, it's breastfeeding, duh. Oh, really cool. I was sitting on the floor eating a Rice crispy snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog. We don't have a dog. We have a cat, so what is that? And I said, did you just buy a dog? And my dad told me he just bought a dog. So, um, I guess I have a dog at my dad's house now. And I went to go pet it, but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like I'm a demon, which I am. <laughs> But it still made me sad, and I was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog. And then I realized I could probably give it something, like a treat. So I got off my butt, and I went upstairs, and I looked in the pantry and found some dog bones. I opened up the package and grabbed a bone, and then I slowly approached him and placed it on the mat. But then my dad's cat, Luna, got in the way. Ugh. Anyways, I gave it another bone, and... <laughs> it bit my hand so hard, like three fingers fell off. I had to call an ambulance. Just kidding. Uh, he let me come near, and when I touched him, he twitched, and it scared me a little bit. But then he let me pet him. And now we're almost besties, and I took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him so if you want to see more of sammy i posted the pics on my instagram at ben of the week okay bye. i was picking the ticks out of my dogs first so i could collect them and inject them with acid until they pop but just before i could even get to doing that my phone went off and when i checked it my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them so i dropped what i was doing and i met them at the roller derby rink now i paid ten dollars to rent some skates but listen these babies were impossible to put on and when i stood up it felt like i had fettuccine noodles for legs but it was actually really fun except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me and i'm allergic to small children so i tried to avoid him at all costs but then he got too close to me and i ran him over and in the distance i heard some lady who i think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown feet I so I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall, but I could still hear her screaming in the distance, so I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully, he snuck me out of the mall, and um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So... <laughs>
So my dad loves mangoes, so for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it, because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper, and I wrapped it as something completely different, then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed, and it started to smell really bad, and when I checked it, the mango had molded! So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper, so I got in my car, and I drove back to Walmart, and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword, and I was swinging it around, but I accidentally killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn, and I said, Arby's, we have the meat! Anyways, I got home, and I cut up the mango, and I grabbed a random DVD case, and I put all the mango slices in it, but my dad's cat tried eating it, Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case, and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. What the... I went to Universal Studios today, but when I got to security, I remembered I had a can of spray cheese in my bag, which you can't bring into parks or anything because it's an aerosol, and they're probably scared that I'm gonna, I don't know, like, burn down the Minions ride. So I took my bag and went into the alleyway and wrapped it in the label for my Febreze can that I use as deodorant from time to time. And guess what, baby? They never found it when they searched my bag. So anyways, I went on the Minions ride, and as much as I would have loved to set it on fire until it's nothing but smoldering ruins, I had to settle for beating up the Minion in the gift shop. But anyways, after the ride, I realized I was pretty hungry, and I wasn't gonna spend 20 dollars on harry potter butterbeer when i can just put butter in my beer myself so i snuck into the employees only area to eat my spray cheese and i thought i grabbed the right can when i sprayed it in my mouth but i accidentally grabbed the febreze and basically blinded myself so i asked siri call poison control and she was like calling animal control and i was like what no and animal control was like hello yes what are you reporting and i was like my eyes are burning and they said your ass is burning we recommend pepto bismo and i knew they weren't gonna help so i hung up and i made the hard decision to flush my eyes with I was watching my comfort movie Pitch Perfect on HBO Max for the seventh time today because it's the only thing that makes me feel alive. But then as I was watching it, I got the idea that since I'm a talentless blob of bones and skin, I should learn how to play the cups. So I grabbed a bunch of wine glasses to spice it up and I invented the glass song and I spent days studying Pitch Perfect on HBO Max perfecting my talent so that I could get so good so I could perform for the world to see. So I started to print out flyers and then I went to the first stop of my glass song world tour in Paris. And when I got there, I stuck flyers everywhere to really get the word out about my show. But then as I was doing my sound checks on the day of my performance, I got a little too carried away and... So anyways, I'm just gonna stick to watching Pitch Perfect on HBO Max and you should too. Today, I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine and Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed a container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit up. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and released the hatches and he kicked it away. But then he got up and chased me inside and I closed the door and I thought it was safe. And oh, I forgot to turn the stove burner off and... I dropped my phone almost as much as I was dropped as a baby. Like, I think it's actually made of butter. I basically have a butter phone. Phone with a butter. Anyways, I really needed a case for it, but I wanted something special. So I used this app called Caseify to make a custom case with every picture of frogs that I have in my whole camera roll. And it was really easy. I just took a little frog with a little leaf. Beep, bop, boop, bang. He's on the case. I took a picture of a frog with a little watering can and beep, bop, boom. He's on the case, baby. Then every other frog grabbed it. Ding dong, the package was at my door. And I was so excited because getting packages is like my number one source of serotonin at this point. And when I opened it, the packaging was like a little present from me to me. Because I have no one special to me to give me presents with. Anyways, I love my little frog case and you can make your own and get 20% off with the code 20HIBEN. Thank you, Case5. I was making sushi with raw chicken instead of raw fish, but I accidentally dropped it on the floor. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw my legs and wondered if I could wax them so they would feel like two slippery hot dogs. So I canceled my chicken sushi, and once I was done cleaning it all up, I went to my garage to find a bottle of Gorilla Glue to wax my legs. But here's the big old catch. I can't make a single noise waxing my legs, because if I wake up my dog, she will literally pee herself in the beanbag chair. So with that in mind, I grabbed some plastic wrap and put the glue on it and made a little waxing strip. Then I knelt down and put the strip on slowly, and at first I was like, this isn't too bad. It just kind of feels kind of numb. And then it started burning and i realized i had to do it now so i ripped it off and it didn't get the wax off <laughs> i panicked and i tried to wipe it off but it just shredded the paper towel got even stickier and also my dog woke up and peed herself but at least the sushi was kind of fine
Today I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship, and I felt like throwing up until she replied with, I'm in Lisbon. And then she sent the, um, Portuguese flag, I think. I don't know, I'm not good at geometry. But anyways, I wanted to surprise her, so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon, Portugal. So, I packed up my stuff and went to the airport, and it was a 30-hour journey, but it was in the name of love. And when I landed, I realized I should probably get her something as a gift, so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section, and I thought, hmm, who would want to suck on feet? Oh, me. So I bought them, and opened up the box, and ate every last Foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun DIY bracelet out of them with hearts on it. So I did just that, and then the next day, I was gonna give my crush the bracelet. So I went to DM her and asked her to meet up and realized she said I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. When you're coming back from seeing Boss Baby 4, but a Walmart delivery truck runs you off the road and you crash right into a power line and your engine starts leaking, but you get out of the vehicle right before it explodes, catapulting you into a tree so hard that you see Jesus and he tells you that you need to stay alive so that you can warn the world that the world is a simulation. And then he brings you back and you tell everyone and the president gives you one trillion dollars and to celebrate, you get yourself some Chili's delivery, but then you find out that you're allergic to a chocolate banana... <laughs> Smoothie. <laughs> well then, good, good luck, luck, Charlie! Wait, are we from the same Amish colony? No, I know you're from TikTok. Wait, what's TikTok? Ben. Your name's Ben, right? Stop. No. Oh, no way! Stop. Okay. Hi. Right. Oh my god, we eating cereal. No, it's ramen noodles. Ew. Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop, so obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer, and I was like, that's strange, they're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around, and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store, and I was like, damn, these Amish are gonna be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts, and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which- oh, Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and- Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found out they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me, and let me know if I should drive up there and join- my favorite thing to do right now is guess people's passwords of their social media accounts because I've actually managed to successfully hack a few accounts. And I also enjoy changing some captions around without people noticing and tagging myself so people think me and Zendaya are besties. So today I managed to log into Sean Mendez's account and then I decided to DM some people some pickup lines like Olivia Rodrigo, which might have made me responsible for him and Camila Kabubu breaking up, but anyways, today I wanted to get into Instagram's Instagram account to, I don't know, post a picture of myself or something. And then I remember the guy who owns Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg. So when I tried logging in with a bunch of different passwords and none were working, I realized it kept asking me if I'm not a robot. And since old Marky Poo is a robot, I left it blank and then boom, I was in, baby. And I was stressed about what I should post to like 400 million people, so I just chose this random picture of me at the beach and now half a million people have liked it. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for the validation. Ma what? I want a bowl of chili. Okay. What is this? It's chili. <laughs> I was at the Tokyo Olympics gym today, training for all the sports I'm gonna get a gold medal in. But in the middle of me training, this Edna Mode looking person came over to me, and I thought they were gonna say, you aren't allowed to put the big balls in your shirt and steal them. So I was getting ready to sprint away, but they actually just complimented my phone case. And I was like, oh, did you mean my case by case with fun little moons on it that keeps my phone safe while also looking cute? Available in so many fun, different, customizable designs. But I realized I didn't actually say it out loud, so I was like, thanks. And then they asked if my phone case had moons on it because I like astrology. And I was like, mm, yeah. And then they were like, oh, what sign are you? And then I told them I'm a virgin. Oh, and, and then I realized I meant to say Virgo. And I just made this person think I've never gotten any action. Anyways, you can get 15% off your very own Caseify case with the code 15 Ben. They are great, and I highly recommend. I'm gonna go cry in the corner now. Bye.
Today I went to go get the Moderna vaccine and it hurt a little bit when they gave it to me, but afterwards I went home and I took the band-aid off. But as I was peeling it off, I noticed something hard was underneath. And when I pulled it out and looked at it, I saw a microchip. I've been microchipped. I thought that was fake. But I had to get to the bottom of this. So I grabbed a microchip adapter and put it in my phone and a folder came up saying, we see you. And in it was a picture that said, meet Candace at 42 Wallaby Way at 2 p.m. And I was really scared, but the next day I went to the address on my bike, and it ended up taking me to this huge building, and I found my way in. But as I was looking around, there was no one there, so I shouted, Candace, who's Candace? And all of a sudden, the lights went out, and I felt something grab me. Next thing I knew, I woke up in a chair tied up. I was so confused, and I shouted, who is Candace? What is Candace? Then, out of the darkness, he appeared, and he said, <laughs> Candace did. Today I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First I was editing my name onto a hospital band and one of the rows said sex. So I said yes, winky face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years and I thought it was gonna light on fire and somehow that old mama worked and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip my drip, my drip, yeah. And then I tore my bed apart and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital signage. And then I laid down in my hospital bed and I made the finishing touches with a phone charger. And then I put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together. Then I finally took my Snapchat and I added a black and white filter to be all dramatic. And I made the caption, down bad, wish I had a big booty bee to give me CPR. And I sent it to her. Then I ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and I put my shirt back on. And I was waiting around when she finally replied and when I opened it she said McDonald's. hello there um my son Nathaniel ate a piece of poop in your play place piece of poop piece of poop where in a play area in the play place and I thought it was very disturbing we bought him a happy meal and I guess he wasn't satisfied so he wanted to go for a brownie for dessert where is the poop you have to tell me exactly then I can go and check why didn't you talk to the manager right away so we oh. have a monthly contract Na from Nathaniel day. Nathaniel yeah. put that poop down that is the dog Nathaniel so I was going through my local Taco Bell drive through when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych, bitch. I went to Michael's to spend $200 on crap. Because last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes. So I grabbed one of those and then there was a bunch of fake fruit and i saw they had fake bananas so i bought a fake banana but when i went to pay the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if i still wanted the bitten banana but i bought the bitten banana anyways and then when i got home i broke the box open because i don't own scissors and look it came with these fun goggles uh, anyways next i went to my garage to find a hammer and then i put the geode on the ground and smashed it and that baby blew open and it looks kind of like a fruit gusher so um please let me know in the comments if i can eat these or not thank you bye <laughs> Timothy, you will go to jail. I'm sorry. <laughs> Today, I snuck an AirTag tracking device into an Ed Sheeran concert so that I could somehow stick it onto him to track him down. Because that's for the FBI. No. Anyways, randomly BTS opened for him, and then Eddie was about to come on stage, so I had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed, I walked up to the front of the stage, locked onto my target, and BAM! It flew through the air. And now I know there's no way of it sticking to him. However, they have to pack up the stage and it's probably going to travel with him. So anyways, I saw Doja Cat and Lil Nas X and then left the concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So I flew to Las Vegas. And when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him. But the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane. So I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um, yeah. Today I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad. And then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. But more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. 
baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory and I showed my waitress my ID thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice at Cheesecake Factory. But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices and what did she give me? A bowl of berries. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries. When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free because they were like $10. So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work at Cheesecake Factory. People always ask me, Ben, how is your skin so bright and shiny? So instead of gatekeeping my skincare routine, I'd tell them, personalized skincare formula. <gasps> what I meant to say is, I use Curology's customized skincare formula to keep my skin healthy. My family's used Curology for generations and passed it along to me. Just kidding, they probably use laundry detergent to wash their face, and that's why my uncle's cousin has three eyes. Anyways, I live in the future where all I have to do is send my selfies over to Curology and let my provider know what my skin situation is. And that's how I got my first month of customized skincare for free, plus shipping and handling. Every night I wash my face with a cleanser and then apply my customized skin cream that was prepared just for me. Then I finish it off with a rich moisturizer and voila, my skin is bright and shiny. Isn't that right, clone, that I gave a third degree sunburn to? Today, I was in the drive through line at Starbucks trying to get the Donald Trump drink, which is just a cup that's full of sad old man tears. But as I pulled up, I was feeling generous, and I told the barista, can I pay for the order in front of me? And the Starbucks employee said, that's so sweet. Let me bring that up for you. Would you like anything else? So I said, uh, can I get a cake pop and a white hot chocolate? But that's when the barista said, that comes up to $94.24. I stopped and said, what in the star f did you say? And the barista told me they ordered seven drinks, four pastries, and a travel mug. So I told the barista, hey, I'm actually just getting at the cake pop. But the person ahead of me had already driven away and they told me I had to pay or the cops would be called. So I pulled up and paid, but I wasn't gonna stop until I got my travel mug. I followed the car until it parked and I approached the window and I said, give me the mug! Anyways, look at my $94 Starbucks travel mug that I had to pry out of a soccer mom's hands. Today I went to go see Billie Eilish at Coachella, but before she came on, there was this dude wearing a big sparkly onesie who opened for her that kept staring at me, and I was thinking to myself, what's up, do you have a staring problem, buddy? But anyways, he did a little dancey dance thing, and Shrek was in the audience and seemed to love it. But his cameraman kept getting in the way and then turned to me, and the next thing I knew, rewind that. He put me on the big screen, and I freaked out and went behind the cameraman and started unplugging random cables from his camera, and it turned off the video on the screen. But anyways, then Billie Eilish came on and kept invading my personal space and staring at me, and I was like, do celebrities never get taught that staring is rude? Why are you yelling at me? But then she did her little dancey dance and left the stage, and I took a golf cart home from Coachella, and when I woke up the next morning, I checked my phone to see a DM from Billie herself asking if I was at her show with a winky face. And I replied, no, silly Billie, here's a restraining order, leave me alone. And I went back to bed. Sir, there are 34 people missing, and we know you did it. What? I don't love everybody. Let's sing the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know what G stands for? There's like in the dumpster behind Walmart. <laughs> yeah, and then, I don't know, where like a chinchilla, like, escaped the petting zoo, and it was like running around and stuff, and it Wait, was... Wait, not to go. So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta. And I was so excited. So I opened it up, but there was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because- I was at a huge party with all my friends, but they aren't really fun. Except for you, Bob. And I was wishing I had a fun skater group to hang out with. So I decided to grab my passport. Not that passport, but my Cinder passport. It lets me see and match profiles from across the world for free. And now I have a whole group of friends and I don't need these bozos anymore. Now the only thing I need is a good skater fit. 
So I bought this doggy camera to spy on my little worm creature, and when I was checking the cameras today, I saw that when she comes through her doggy door, a literal rat has been following her in. And not only that, I caught them canoodling, and I had to shoot a tree to her to break them up so I could go rescue her from Remy the Rat and my house not paying rent. Anyways, I was horrified, and ever since, she's been giving me, uh, rabies vibes, the way she's been kind of foaming at the mouth and trying to bite me. So I took her to a discount vet clinic at the back of a dollar store, and they weighed her little fat butt and then put her on the table. And I told them I think she has rabies, and that's when they pulled out three humongous needles. And then they took her into the back rooms, and I'm not an anti-vax or anything, but she was screaming so much, I was like, bring my girl back! And I grabbed her and brought her home, and now she just has a little bit of rabies, but it's fine, because she just likes to give me love bites. Uh -huh. So it's not our friend Adam's birthday, but we're gonna say it's his birthday anyways, and see if it gets him a cake. <laughs> Thank you. You want me to bring it out after? Um, now is fine. Now? Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday. I don't know what I wish for. Ow. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, we overheard that it's not actually your birthday today, so we're going to have to be charging you for the Sunday. Today I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship and I felt like throwing up until she replied with I'm in Lisbon and then she sent the um Portuguese flag I think I don't know I'm not good at geometry but anyways I wanted to surprise her so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon Portugal so I packed up my stuff and went to the airport and it was a 30 hour journey but it was in the name of love and when I landed I realized I should probably get her something as a gift so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section and I thought mm, who would want to suck on feet oh me so I bought them and opened up the box and ate every last Foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun DIY bracelet out of them with hearts on it. So I did just that, and then the next day, I was gonna give my crush the bracelet. So I went to DM her and asked her to meet up and realized she said, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. Halsey just got sucked into a tornado and is dead. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. No way. This is horrible. Halsey was my favorite. Wow, that's so sad. Anyway, so there's this group called BTS, and they're a K-pop group, and I honestly really love them so much. Um, my favorite is Jimin. I Since everyone keeps asking my skincare routine, first I go for a walk and trip myself and exfoliate my face on the sidewalk. Then after that, I let Pennywise the Clown pull me into a sewer, and I wash my face with brand new fresh sewer water. Then after that, I rub my face in some wood chips to rub off all the dead skin. And finally, I finish it off by gathering some mushrooms and grass by the nearby nuclear power plant and rub it all over my skin. And that is how I get my all-natural glow. Today, I was on a romantic date with my non-existent girlfriend at the park when I saw someone had left a perfectly good laptop on the ground. So I walked over and picked it up and I tried pressing some keys and turning it on, but it was dead. So I brought the laptop home so I could give it some juice and that's when the screen turned on and there was this game called Isles of Glory and I was like, okay, how do I play? And then I asked for my location and I thought, ah, all right. But just that very second, my doorbell rang and when I checked the door, I got this box from No Frills and when I opened it, it was full of bananas and wires and I was like, wait a minute, is this how I play the game? So I went over to my computer and I stabbed the wires into the bananas and then put the wired bananas into my computer. And I can't even make this up. It literally worked with the electrical signals of my hand. And for the next 48 hours, I was playing this game nonstop, squeezing these bananas. Because it turns out you can win up to 10 million PC optimum points to redeem for all sorts of things. And I got so excited that at one point I squeezed the banana too hard. And anyways, I squirted banana all over my computer, but you can go play yourself and win points, but only for a limited time. I think your microphone is off. Okay, well, it was nice meeting you. I can't... Hi! Hi, what's up? You look a lot like me. What in the what? Listen, if you think white people don't know how to cook, well then watch this. We got some rubber elastics for the noodles. We got a nice bag of guinea pig intestines. We got a moldy orange for flavor. And then a little bit of bean water. And then we top it off with a little bit of spritz of Febreze. And some booty pebbles from a toilet brush. <laughs> the video ends here because this is where I threw up. Thank you and have a great day.
I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until <laughs> I woke up on some cliffs, on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said, Please, they won't let me air fry. Elizabeth, I will save you. So I was trying to watch that Luca movie on this sketchy website until I saw this ad that said some lady named Gertrude was a hot single in my area. And I thought, oh my god, it's a heat wave. I need to get Gertrude hydrated before she gets heat stroke. I clicked the picture and immediately 20 programs started downloading on my computer. And I was like, wow, Gertrude must be in STEM or computer science or something. Then all of a sudden I looked down and I had a text from Gertrude and she said that she needs fluids immediately. So I told her that I'm coming and I asked her where. And after she gave me the address, I got in my car and I drove to the address, which happened to be in Ikea. But anyway, she said to come to the bedding center and my GPS took me to the exact room, but no one was there and I was getting a little bored, so I decided to lay down for a quick nap. But when I woke up, Ikea was closed and I got up and tried to leave, but that's when I realized my wallet and keys were stolen. And I was really freaked out, but I found the exit and as soon as I got outside, I saw, I saw some figure standing behind the trees. He started approaching me and I was like, oh man, I'm sorry, was that your girl? It was too late because the man was angry and he attacked me. <laughs> Last weekend, me and some pals and Mr. Beast gathered around to sacrifice a giant minion for fun. But after we killed it to death, I was like, now what? And Mr. Beast said, Dave is finally dead. So is this stupid trend. But I thought to myself, that's kind of awkward because to me, it wasn't a trend. And I got a giant minion tramp stamp tattoo a few days before. And I was so embarrassed that I got in my car and drove around looking for a laser tattoo removal place. But the only one that I could find in my town went out of business when they accidentally cut someone's leg off. And it also looks like the back room. So I ordered a tattoo laser gun off of Sheehan. And when it arrived a week later, I got ready to use it after accidentally burning a hole in my eyeball but i reached behind me and started burning it off and it smelled like burnt chicken for about an hour but i thought it was essentially gone until i was at walmart a week later when i saw this lady drop her toe fungus medication and when i bent down to pick it up for her the scar popped out and she screamed and thought i had monkey pox and i was like shut the hell up wordy ass bitch. let's see those toes you need to scream for my friends will be in my car saying i'm hungry let's stop for food it's a little disrespectful, um, considering I give all my friends my lice for a reason, um, so help yourself to a snack, uh, and eat up, baby. Do you ever scroll through Instagram all day like a Coco Melon iPad baby until you see that you're somehow on Christian Mingle and you've matched with the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place? But then when you switch back to Instagram, it's down and you're like, uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, that happened to me, so I thought, well, may as well join the Amish. So I went to their website, which I was surprised they even had in the first place, and I signed myself up and gave them my address and my social security number, which I didn't really know why they needed that, but anyways, later that day, someone rang my doorbell and slipped a business card under the door, and when I picked it up, it had a number on it, so I texted the number, and I I decided to ask them, so what's it like being in the Amish? And they replied, we are in Spain. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know they had the Amish in Spain. So you know what I did? I booked the next flight to Barcelona to try and join them. But when I finally got there, I turned my phone off airplane mode and the text came in. And it turns out he actually said they are in pain, not Spain, because they have no electricity. And, well, sucks to be y'all, I'm in Spain. Ole, 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 ole. I was joining some random Zoom calls today so I could make some friends. But after accidentally joining an Amish call in the Zoom, I accidentally joined the Zoom call with this guy in it. And I was like, who's that? Until I realized I had joined a call with Dr. Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president. And then I looked in the mirror to make sure I didn't look like a cockroach. And then as soon as I looked presentable, I grabbed my laptop and brought it out to the living room. And then I joined the call and I was like, how are you, Dr. Fauci? And he said, I'm good, Ben. Nice to be with you. How you doing? And then I froze and tried to think of like a question about COVID or something. And that's when I remembered my uncle texting me out of the blue saying that there's pee in the vaccine so i was like let me set the record straight so i asked him the vaccine looks like it's just a few drops of water and i feel like a lot of people don't really know what's actually going on in there you, what vaccine did you get ben i have moderna i got moderna too so okay what, so when you and i got injected what happened it went into the muscle the body recognizes the protein of that virus and neutralizes it. I feel like that was like a, a crash course and a PhD in biology, but <laughs> it all made sense. I, I figured it out. Well, you heard it from the White House. Better the week. The vaccines are safe. Go get it, please. Benjamin.
went or got you something for your birthday. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I hope you like it. 911, I've just received an explosion. 10404, we have a bomb. Sir, where are you? Behind Walmart. Please come soon. Target has been located. Send in the remote diffusal. Hi, here's how you can save the Arctic in less than a minute. There's a place called the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It is one of the last places in the U.S. Arctic where endangered animals such as polar bears, caribou, and over 200 species of birds are protected from humans. Trump's administration could open up this piece of public land and sell it for oil and drilling by January 6th. Now, the Gwich'in people have been living on this sacred land for decades. This land is home to them, and they will be irreversibly harmed along with all the other wildlife that live there if we let this happen. So here's how you can help stop that in the time that it takes to watch a TikTok. Please go Go to protectthearctic.org. The link is in my bio on both Instagram and TikTok. Just write your name, email, and it'll send a message to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And hopefully with enough of these messages, we can prevent the sale. The Arctic is already in the worst shape that's ever been before because of climate change. We will be the generation that's affected by climate change the most. We can do our part to fix this. So please do this quick action. Push for sustainability in your daily life. And that's all for now. I love you. Bye. Alrighty, and how are those first few bites of those chicken tenders coming along? Oh yeah, can me and my uh, wife get a straw, please? Thank you. Absolutely! Uh, one straw coming right up. Oh my god, who wants a straw when this turtle's dying? Hey sir, make like a turtle and eat plastic. I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy, so I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, the solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in, but then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they reminded me what my my credit card number is so i went to the apple store to go replace all my apple products that are now fried but i got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing and i played some random rats dancing on all the iphones but then an employee yelled at me so i fled with no iphone and now i'm trying to catch a bird so i can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since i have no electronic devices left so I've always wondered, what would happen if you put a Tide Pod in your dishwasher instead of like the dish soap pod thing? Like, would it explode or like what would happen? So today I decided to sacrifice my Android phone to record it. And I turned the flash on and put it in my dishwasher. And then once it was recording inside there, I closed it up and started the dishwasher on the low cycle. But after a few minutes, it started shaking a lot. And I noticed that there was water leaking and dripping out the bottom. So I panicked and I canceled it and I opened it up. And I took the phone out and somehow it survived and was still working. So I played the video to see what happened and... Every time you're not running, and Sheeran gets closer. Hey, does your house have, um, reverse osmosis water? We do not, but we have reverse mitosis water. Would you be interested? No, I meant, um, re reverse osmosis water. No, no, no. Reverse mitosis water. Wait, um, this doesn't look like water. Yeah, hey. I'm not naming any names, but it'd be a lot of people. A lot of people getting pushed if I was in red light, green light with them. It'd be Coco Baby Baby Send me back I was so bored today I googled myself and I noticed there was a tab saying Ben of the Week Heights and it said that I was 5'7 which is slander because I'm 6 feet tall. Look, I literally measured it. I am 6 feet tall! Like, I can drop my phone with a caseify case for my head and it survived. Not only did my phone survive with my caseify case, but the case is super fun too. They have lots of different designs which are super fun. And like, look, here's Dula Peep with hers. Look at me, my twin, Dula Peep. But I have this fun shipping label one which I tried putting in a mailbox once but then I realized it's not a real shipping label, it's just a case and I had to fish my phone out of the mailbox with talks. Anyway, I highly recommend getting one since I see some of y'all raw dogging that iPhone with no protection, no case, no nothing. And they come in super fun packaging and have free little sanitizing wipes for you stinky mamas. Anyways, you can get 20% off with code 20 high Ben. Okay, bye! Hey man, uh, we're going to Taco Bell, right? Yeah man, it's actually just down here. That's just, that's just kind of weird because Google Maps says you take a right here. I said it's... Down here! Listen, you might hear the words hand-cut fruit and think, mmm, yummy in my smoothie. Well, you know what I think? Hepatitis C in my smoothie. Stop food board illnesses.
So there was this guy on the train today who offered me a hundred bananas if I gave him a foot massage with mustard. I didn't do it, obviously, and I'll take a lie detector test to prove it. Okay, I did not give a foot massage to a random person. No! You're gonna give me the bananas, right? Can I get you anything else today? Um, how big are your corn dogs? Um, you ever seen like a chicken strip? It's kind of like chicken that. Chicken strip? I've never even seen a chicken wear clothes. Today I was flying over North Korea and trying to sleep even though there was a baby screaming behind me because it shat itself. But what really kept me awake was a song started playing that plays in like all those plane crash TikToks. And then the plane started shaking and the seatbelt sign turned off. And the plane was shaking so much that it spilled water all over my no no square. And I thought if this plane is going down, I'm not about to be found dead looking like I peed myself. So I snuck into the bathroom even though it said seatbelts on. And I grabbed some paper towel and tried to dry it off. But it was shaking so much that I just went back to my seat. And that's when I realized the music was coming from the stupid baby behind me's iPad. Because it knocked its AirPods off from starting so aggressively so i tried to lean between the seats to turn it off but i couldn't reach it so i called over the flight attendant and asked if we could just throw the child out of the airlock but she didn't speak english and just gave me almonds so i peacefully lost my mind for seven hours and when i landed i saw the most nasty little starter and chased after it because it left its ipad behind but when i touched it there was literal baby food on it and i dropped it and cracked the screen and then i picked it up again to check if it was working and saw the lock screen and it jump scared me and i dropped it again whoops <laughs> And just the salsa today. Bah! Okay, your total is 420. Will that be in your checking or savings account? My chicken account, please. Your checking account? My chicken account. <laughs> chicken account. <laughs> hmm, I'll have what he's having. Sir, this isn't a restaurant. This is death row. He's getting euthanized for killing 47 people. <laughs> I didn't stutter. So I was completely legally watching a movie today when I won an iPhone 13. And all I had to do was enter my social security number. So I typed it in. And then a week later, while I was blending my candles together to make a mega candle, I got a notification that a package was delivered. So I ran downstairs to grab it, and the packaging was a little strange, but I cracked open the box, which apparently was for the iPhone 14. And then when I opened up that box, they had sent me a toy car. And I was like, I know I didn't just give away my identity for a Hot Wheel. Then I realized it's actually a phone. So I decided to hang up on the 911 one operator that I had panic called and I checked out my new phone and it was pretty cool until I realized it was a used phone and I think the previous owner was someone's grandma because I saw in her text she wasn't just having booty calls but a whole booty conference now I didn't want this phone anymore after going into the images and seeing granny's milkies so I picked it up one last time and checked her contact section and noticed she had her address on there so I grabbed the phone and biked over to her house which happened to be only an hour away and when I got there um granny is on her Jeff Bezos type B. So I decided to put my name in her contacts and then I threw the phone over the fence and I'll let you know if I slide. I woke up at 4 a.m. to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today, but when I opened it up, I saw he's been scooping it up the jar in a really strange way, which is really inefficient, because there's just more surface area for it to dry out. But anyways, I wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich, but I felt like he needed some raspberries, so as I was taking the bread out of the fridge, I knocked out the raspberries. But I believe in the five-minute rule instead of the five-second rule, so I scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich, and I added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese, and then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny, and I thought I was having an allergic reaction to the peanut butter but then i remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest and i just ate an ounce of oh. so i grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control but they were closed because of thanksgiving and i was like damn i'm really gonna puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621 so anyways i decided i should probably write my will and i opened up my notes app and said all my money and my plant collection and my life-size zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog thank you and goodbye forever i guess <laughs> Guys, I just got my 23 and me results back and it's gonna tell me what diseases I have. Diabetic?
Y'all want to be a Disney princess so bad? Okay, Sleeping Beauty, here's a coupon for the local euthanasia clinic. That's nice, gonna be Hi there, I'm wondering if it's possible to like pay you guys like $20 to like punch me in the head. Pay you like 20, pay us like $20 so we can punch you in the head? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't teach violence. What about like me punching myself in the head? That's all up to you if you have that self-esteem like that. Do you think she's cute? I'm blind actually. You're a TikTok. Don't crack I am a TikTok. You are a freaking queer. <laughs> Can you sing? La 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 la. Thank you for calling. I hope I can help you. Mom, I'm sorry. I got Sally pregnant. I don't know how to tell you. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Like I used a balloon, and but it didn't work, and I'm really it's sorry. A condom. I'm calling a balloon. Do you still love me? Yeah, of course. You bring the corsets. We bring the cinches. No one wants a waste over. Nine inches. So but the makeup contains lead poison. At least your complexion will bring all the boys in. <laughs> Put that monster down. You're like four. Okay, you're doing all this like two. <laughs> <laughs> How you go from drinking breast milk to monster in the same year, bro? You are a toddler. <laughs> oh, bye, homie. <laughs> I'm walking back from Chuck E. Cheese's after a nice meal with my family when all of a sudden I see a marker on the ground and a piece of paper fluttering near it. It whispers to me, Boba, Boba. And all of a sudden I feel a presence behind me. I turn around and it's Kevboy Perry. <laughs> Since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the global pandemic is officially over. They might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin, which is one, two, three, four. And then after that, I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp. But when I was driving home, I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell into my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego, but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces in a little Lego house. So maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad. I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay. Cause I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive through and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeye's. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, okay, 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 okay. and I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away, but it said it was disconnected. So I ran over to the drive-thru and our favorite plumber Luigi was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. Do you ever wonder how it went down for the first person to ever get their ear pierced? Like, how did that happen? Was it just like, uh... What the booga booga? You like the new piercing? Look, we're matching. <laughs> what the hell is a piercing? This is a this is a stabbing. <laughs> no bitch, you god. This is gonna be the next biggest thing in Pangea. Okay, sure, but why my ear? Why not literally any other part of my body? <gasps> uh, Ooga Booga, what do you do? Oh my god, that's literally worse. <gasps> Wait, do you want one too? <laughs> what? No, no, no. I, I can't believe it's been a whole year. Oh no, bro, is that your dog? I'm I'm so sorry. No, Gilbert's still alive. It's been a whole year since we got married. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Alabama, bro, baby.
Hey there, just a reminder that when you see construction and say road work ahead, it's the funniest thing ever. In fact, there's really nothing else that's funnier than a good road work ahead joke. They're original, they're hilarious. I love them so much. Today, as I was driving, I saw the most precious old man dressed up as Santa, and he was standing on the street corner waving at cars as they went by. So I parked my car, and I went up to him, and he was giving out free candy canes. I thought that was so nice, so I grabbed the whole basket, because I was really hungry, and they were also free. And as I was running away from him, I heard him call me a ho-ho-ho or something. But anyways, I got into my car, and I ate all the candy canes, and they were so delicious. But that's when I noticed that the basket said, Salvation Army Donation Bin, and I was like, Army? I I didn't know Sam string to BTS, but then I saw there was a bunch of money at the bottom and I started to tear up because not only did Santa give me free candy canes, but it also gave me free money. So guys, from now on, if you ever see one of these in public, that is a bucket of free money just for you. So make sure you grab it and run. Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. Hi, baby girl. What's up? <laughs> oh <laughs> Love you so much, baby girl. I'd do anything for you. Can I get a follow back maybe? Hey guys, just got first class. Uh, I'm heading to North Korea. Um, they gave us free, free orange juice, free a uh, little mask to come down and put you to sleep. It's super good. Um, I'm loving this so much. I was scrolling through Tinder because the last person I met was when I was at the Apple store and came across some girl's number that she left on an iPad. So I took it and went home and tried texting it and just said hi. And then she replied asking if she could come over for some eggplant. And I panicked because I've never cooked eggplant before. But I remembered I could make eggplant parmesan. So I was looking for recipes on Google when I realized I accidentally typed in eggplant permission. Anyways, she said she was 30 minutes away and I ended up running to the grocery store to buy some eggplant. So I grabbed some eggplants and then I needed the parmesan. So I went up to this giant wheel of parmesan they had but i couldn't lift it so i just got a little piece anyways i went home and chopped up the eggplant and dropped some on the ground but i used the five minute rule because i'm half white and i put it in the pan and then i added some cheese and was gonna bake it when i found a spider in my oven so i baked that b instead until he was nice and crispy and then i threw the eggplant in and it was finally ready so i sent her a picture of the eggplant parmesan and said you ready for this eggplant but then all of a sudden my texts to her were green and i heard tire screeching outside anyways now i'm back on tinder so if anyone wants a serving of eggplant parmesan make sure you match with rumor has it that one in three hoes are mad i'm not mad i'm not mad <laughs> I like to collect mold off of my old moldy bread and put it in a baggie that I keep in my pocket so whenever I'm out and about at an overpriced restaurant getting an overpriced $15 acai bowl, I can order one and then eat the whole thing and then once I'm done, I take out my mold babies and pop one in so I can take it to the register and go full Karen mode and show them the mold and then BOOM BABY! Refund. I've done this in the past with dead flies at Olive Garden, but I like having bread in my pocket instead of dead decaying flies. Anyways, I wanted to give my mom some makeup, so I tried it at Sephora by putting some mold in the makeup, and then I brought the sample to the manager, and I got a free one. And then I sanitized my hands to get the mold off, of course. Anyways, after Sephora, I really wanted some tortilla chips, so I grabbed a bag, opened it up, popped some mold in, and then boom! I took it to the cashier, and I got a refund, baby. And then when I got home, I took a bite and forgot to take the mold out! Boom, baby, mold poisoning. Hi, sweetie, what you doing? Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm just blowing up balloons for every year that grandma's been around. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Nana's 127. Whoa, happy birthday, grandma. I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes, ah, in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby, when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen, but when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these? So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos! And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction. But regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with $150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass-boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes to have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Karen.
Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down and I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the ground was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... Today, I hiked up to the Hollywood sign, but there was a fence blocking access to it, so I committed a little bit of a crime, and I managed to get through, and I changed the sign to Holly Boo by covering the W with a B for Boo. Anyways, I was walking down, and I saw helicopters flying overhead, and I was getting kind of nervous, so I ran into the bushes, and I hid from them, because apparently I was on government property, or whatever that means. Anyways, I got an emergency alert on my phone, and when I checked, it said that there was a $2 million bounty for a six-foot man in green, so I realized I'll have to live off the grid forever in these bushes, with my only food being lit. Lady Gaga Oreos that I brought as a snack. Anyways, I managed to sneak away to a swamp, but I heard the choppers getting closer. But that's when I looked in the distance and saw none other than a six foot man in green in the swamp. I had to act fast, so I grabbed my phone and I dialed 911 and I ratted on Shrek. Anyways, Shrek was arrested and charged with eight felonies and I got a two million dollar reward. So now I'm rich and I bought a mansion. Thanks, Shrek. They say you attract what you fear. <laughs> An iPhone XS Max, 256 gigabytes with two years of Apple Care warranty. Wait a second, it's just a silly old Samsung. So I don't know if you saw, but Little Nos X released these new Nike shoes that have a drop of real human blood in them. But I thought the colors were cute, so I ordered a pair of them. And while I was waiting around for them to arrive, I saw a lot of Karens were mad about it. And I was trying to figure out why, because having spare human blood on you at all times would be so helpful. Like if I was ever, I don't know, walking back from Taco Bell and a Toyota Prius smashes into me. And I'm lying on the ground like, dang, this is kind of awkward. Also, I'd probably be dying to need a blood transfusion. In that moment, I could just pop my shoe off and use my shoe blood and be completely fine. Then I could grab my food that I dropped from being hit by a car and find a nice bench to eat my taco on. Until I realize I'm currently on church property and I'm wearing my Lil Nas X Satan shoes and uh oh. Today I woke up on Mr. Beast's 35 foot tall inflatable minion that I tried blowing up the night before with my lungs, but my asthma kicked in and I passed out. But anyways, last week he was like, Hey Ben, can you make me the world's largest minion? But I hung up on him, because he's not despicable enough, he's like the opposite, he's like philanthropicable. But he called back and I was like, he really is despicable. And I agreed to do it and ever since then I have been making sure this minion is perfect. So I got the whole factory to line up and take turns blowing it up so I wouldn't be the only one passing out. And I tried to fashion together a giant suit to fit him, but I ran out of fabric and... But finally he was ready. The only problem was when I opened my trunk and tried to fit his body in it, which usually it can fit a few of those, he didn't fit. So I had to ship him in a truck, but I wanted to be along for the journey, so I snuck in while the back door was open and rode in that boy across America until we finally stopped. And I opened the door and... Hey. Hey. Uh, I, I got your minion. Uh, just put it over there. Uh... Okay. Valentine's Day is in exactly one month, and I'm not letting you be sad and single like me. So, I made a list of three ways you can easily get a bang. The first and best method is to search up their Spotify or Apple Music and look at what their top songs are. And then you can take their top songs and put it on your story and pretend like you have the same music taste. Then they'll see it and you can tell them, why yes, I love a uh, pilot's license by Olivia Mosquito. The second method is to buy a billboard asking your crush out, but that's kind of expensive. So finally, the third method is to post TikToks in front of your house, making sure the street sign is visible in the background. Then when you get home, I just like to leave the door unlocked and post things that would really attract some new friends. This will invite plenty of new people to come to your house and meet you. Like there's this mysterious hooded figure that took all my stuff yesterday. I considered it a Valentine's gift from me to them. And I think we might have a spark between us. Away.